This video shows the construction sequence of a Jacobs 17.5 kW wind turbine that we constructed near Lake Ontario in upstate New York. This is the completed tower in operation. You can see it turning to track the wind direction and the speed of the blades changing with wind speed. The anemometer is mounted to the right of and just below the blade. This device provides the owner with both real-time and average wind speed readouts on the meters in the ground station. It takes a crew of four to six workers about three construction days to complete a windmill of this type. In this location, we've engineered a foundation about four feet deep and 15 feet square. Mats made of steel reinforcing rods are prepared for structural reinforcement of the foundation. This template is used to accurately position the bolts that will connect to the tower base. The anchor bolts extend several feet into the foundation and interlock with the mesh. Two layers of steel reinforcing rod are used to strengthen the foundation. The first is placed about one foot off the bottom of the hole and the second about one foot down from the top of the foundation. We take great care to ensure that the foundation is cleanly formed at grade and absolutely level. Several loads of concrete are delivered to the site the afternoon of day one. This particular installation required about 35 yards in total. Winter installations like this one require that we use heated concrete and include special chemicals in the mix to ensure proper forming and curing at low temperature. During the pour, we vibrate the concrete thoroughly to avoid honeycomb and air pockets. About one foot from the top, we add the second layer of rebar mesh. The anchor bolt template is set in place so that the anchor bolts extend down underneath the top layer of mesh. The power vibrator is used to get a good set throughout the pour and the concrete is finished and left to cure for about 30 days. Once the concrete is cured, we return for our second day of construction to assemble the tower and install the ground station electrical system. It takes four experienced men about eight hours to assemble the triangulated frame tower. Galvanized steel is used throughout. All bolts are double nutted and torqued to manufacturer's specification. Each tower is engineered to support the specific wind turbine that will be used. The engineers must ensure that there are no problems with harmonic vibrations. Here you can see the controls that the electrician has installed in the ground station. The inverter translates the DC power produced by the alternator on top of the tower into standard AC power. The phaser translates the 220 volt three phase output of the inverter into the 120 volt single phase power used in most homes and businesses. The kilowatt hour meter shows exactly how much power has been generated by the wind turbine. The disconnect allows the owner to disconnect the turbine generator from the premise electrical system. Normally this is required by code or by the local utility company. Day three, the tower is assembled, the pad has cured, the ground station is complete. We are ready to put up a wind turbine. This 100 foot tower required a 130 foot boom on the crane. Fully assembled, the tower weighs about 5,000 pounds. Safety is the overriding concern during the lift. We keep everyone out from underneath the load as it rises. Great skill is required of the crane operator who must make a smooth, slow lift. Sudden moves can damage the tower while it's horizontal. As the tower comes close to vertical, the crew secures the base to prevent it from spinning around and then guides the tower down onto the anchor bolts in the foundation. With the tower in place, we are ready to install the wind turbine itself. Here's the main frame of the turbine still in its shipping crate. The owner's daughter gives you a perspective of its size. The factory has pre-installed the 25 kVA alternator in the main frame. The electrical junction box is visible on the bottom right. A disc brake is mounted on the main drive shaft. This allows us to positively stop the blades for maintenance and adjustments. The gearbox is mounted at the head of the main frame. The tapered shaft extends outward from the gearbox. 
The blades are mounted to a governor assembly. The governor mounts to this tapered shaft. The owner's daughter was glad to model the governor assembly. The turbine blades mount on the brass colored shafts. I've mounted the governor on the main frame and we are preparing to mount the blades to the governor. We've just installed the completed blade assembly on the main frame. I'm demonstrating how the governor allows the blades to change pitch. This feathers the blades which reduces their bite in the wind, slowing the blades and protecting the entire turbine assembly in high wind conditions. This unit has actually survived wind speeds in excess of 100 miles an hour. During operation, feathering is controlled by springs which connect the blades to the governor. I'm adjusting spring tension to a predetermined setting to allow the blades to feather in winds over 28 miles an hour. A crewman climbs the tower and disconnects the lifting cable and we prepare to lift the completed turbine assembly. During the lift we connect guides to both the head and tail of the assembly to prevent a wind gust from carrying the assembly into the tower. We lift the assembly higher than the tower, gently swing it into position, and two crewmen guide it home. Steady fellas! The turbine assembly is anchored to the tower with 12 bolts and the electrical connections are made. This close up of the inverter shows in real time the amount of electricity that is being produced in kilowatt hours. The anemometer reading is displayed in the lower right corner giving real time wind speed indication in miles per hour. As you can see from the reading on the anemometer, the wind speed is at or above the maximum rating for this turbine and the blades are feathering a bit, but the high efficiency turbine is actually producing a small percentage more electricity than it's rated for. This affirms that everything is installed properly for optimal performance. The generated electricity is fed directly into the owner's standard electrical panel where it is used for any purpose, for electric heat, hot water, or to run the radio. It makes no difference. If local demand exceeds the capacity of the turbine, power is automatically taken from the local utility company. Excess power generated by the wind turbine is fed back into the local utility grid and recorded on these two meters. The meter on the left records utility power used. The meter on the right measures wind turbine power sold back to the utility. And here it is, the completed wind turbine doing just what its new owner likes to see. It's quiet and eco-friendly. Its simple design is very reliable and efficient. It automatically turns to track the wind and it protects itself in high wind conditions. It's another beautiful sunny day in upstate New York and this turbine is doing a tremendous job for its new owner. Here are a few other windmills we installed that season. Atop Bell Hill in Utica, New York. Paris Hill just south of Utica. College Hill in Clinton, New York. On a dairy farm outside of Vernon, New York. We've installed many wind turbines on dairy farms. Here's the first wind turbine ever installed for a public school in New York State. This is Waterville Central School on Route 20. The State University of New York had us install this unit at Morrisville and connect it to their dairy farm. This was the first wind turbine installed in a New York State University. Wompsville, New York, near Oneida, just off Route 5, this powers a residence. Here's a 10KW Jacob system installed in Henderson Harbor. Connected to a residence, the owner heats his home with electricity and gets a check from the utility company for about $150 a month. Returning to where we started, here's the unit you saw us build in Dexter, New York, near Watertown. We check with the owner the next spring. He reported that the best production to date was 2,700 kilowatt hours in a single month. All of the wind turbines you've seen in this video were installed in the 1980s. Most have had only basic maintenance and are still in operation today some 25 years later. This proves that wind turbines are an effective, excellent investment that pays off year after year.